Thanks for tuning in to our bonus episode preview. This is just a short sample of this week's exclusive Patreon episode. You can hear the episode in its entirety by becoming a member at patreon.com slash indoctrination, where you'll gain access to all of our exclusive episodes and merchandise. I am so happy to have Chris Buckley back on the show today. An old friend. I feel like an old friend. You know, when you... um, when you share a lot, when you share a lot that feels really personal, it can make you feel connected, you know, even though I haven't met you in person, but we've talked a bunch and, uh, and I am so happy to have you back and it is by popular demand. So, uh, people really wanted to hear more from you and how you've been doing and answer, you know, some of the other questions that came up from some of the people who listened to the first couple episodes with you and with you and your wife. So welcome back. Hey, thanks for having me. It's uh, definitely feels um, like we've known each other forever. When you share with somebody, you, you you form a bond with them. So I think that's that's probably why we feel like we've known each other forever. Right. <laughs> right. It's very true. So and and it's nice. And I want to hear about more of the work that you're doing. And I have just a bunch of questions about what's been happening in the world and some of the trends that you've seen and maybe more about your experiences. So just let us know, though, how is life in general? How are you and how's your family? So I've been with Parents for Peace for a few years now, and uh, I'm still really much engaged in that work. It's, uh, it's such a rewarding field to be able to help somebody and to know that, that your hard work, your commitment to others is not going to waste you know i mean like just to just to be able to help one person is uh it's an amazing feeling i could have any job in the world man and and i get to do the coolest thing with the most amazing people uh the the guys at at parent for peace from the founders uh the bledsoes to our executive director miriam and our operations uh, programs manager Emma Duen. It's the most amazing group of people and the, the most awesome work environment. My brother from another mother, Pardeep Kalika, the other clinician at Parent for Peace, and, and they've just taught me so much in in the time that I've been there. And I've started to embark on a journey to get my certified peer support counselors license through the state of Georgia, so that I can actually like do this in a in an official capacity. And then after that, I will move on to the National Peer Support Counselor Certification. But in the meantime, I'm taking a really cool course with Dr. Basil Vanderkolk, the author of The, the Body Keeps the Score. And it's, uh, it's, a, it's a nine-month course called uh, Trauma Studies. It's a certificate in trauma studies. Uh, so I'm, I'm taking that, and, and hopefully that'll help me to just be the best version of me that I can be to help the people that I help. I, I mean... The, the the motto in the mental health world and the, the peer support world is you can do no harm. So that's that's what I've been working on. We're promoting the film. Uh, we're going to be heading to Boulder tomorrow to get out to a uh, film festival to, you know, kind of promote the release of the movie Refuge, uh, which is kind of like my story into and out of extremism. Wow. Okay. Wow. All right. So by the time people hear this, then the movie will have already been released. So where would they be able to see it? It's limited release as of yet? As of yet, it's limited re- release through the film festivals. We're kind of like, you know, hitting the country's like major film festivals. Uh, in April, I believe we will be in Cleveland, Ohio. They can get on the website for the Cleveland Film Festival and uh, reserve an online ticket to watch it online if they wanted to. That's very cool. So much of what we talked about last time was people really preying on each other. Just like you would say that the car would stop, you were supposed to get out and sort of beat up the whomever, you know, somehow because that was going to benefit the country. The the gay couple, the African-American, the whatever, just people attacking each other for kind of emotional sustenance, to, I think, to feel stronger than, more important than, and, and to kind of keep things in balance and in the kind of order they want it. Did you feel that way? Like you were kind of supposed to be preying on these kinds of people? 
At first, it didn't seem like that at all. It just seemed like we were being manipulated to feel like we were being preyed on. We were having our liberty stripped, our rights stripped. Like we had to conform to these people's lifestyle, not the other way around. And, you know, I mean, like it, it's just it's so weird how they can just manipulate your your view, your worldview. And, you know, after a while, then you, you kind of started picking up on it because you started doing it to other people. I mean, uh, when when I was young and just got into it, you know, when I was a newbie, I was like, you know, hell yeah, we we need to we need to make sure that, you know, I'm a married person, and and to for for the homosexuals to get married takes away from what it is for me to be married. And in reality, like, you know what I mean? Like, that makes no sense. You start to pass that kind of manipulation onto other people who are young like you and and you know the whole time you know it's just full of shit man you're just angry and pissed off and you're just trying to make the world a more miserable place because misery needs company yeah so i mean if you can make somebody and and you know i I think about this too like like you know i'm like one of the most open and raw people you'll ever meet like i don't try to sugarcoat shit like i just try to say like what i think and like it's not up to me to help somebody interpret it but like I do the best I can. So I'm thinking like, like I've had a lot of time to reflect back on that time in the movement. Right. And I think back to like the state of my marriage, Like you can already tell this is going to be a really deep thought, but like maybe the reason that I was so focused on like that area, right. Like, like I didn't want to see same sex couples get married. I didn't want to see this. Maybe it's because, you know, looking back on it, I was going through a really, like shitty period in my marriage, right? To where it's like, I didn't know if it was going to be a marriage tomorrow. And like, I just like, I could see other, like if I seen somebody else happy in their marriage, oh, that fucking pissed me off so bad. And I think the reason it angered me so much is because of what I was going through, what I was dealing with. So I realized that because I was being a shitty husband and a shitty father, and I was, you know, straining my relationship with my kids and my wife to its breaking point, and I was unhappy and they were unhappy that somehow that gave me the right to make other people unhappy based on what I thought. I was like, do you see that weird cycle? Like it makes no sense, but to the person that's going through it, it makes perfect sense. So this whole idea of things not making sense, I mean, that's something we've been bombarded with now for the last couple of years, <laughs> where a lot of things are just spoken as absolutes. And you're like, no, what? And it's sort of based on something else that doesn't make sense. And it's like this house of cards of logic. And so it's so interesting. When, when you start talking in absolutes and you start to, to try to make everything an absolute and you forget the fact that life itself is fluid. You know, it's evolving, it moves, it expands, it contracts, everything changes all around you at all times. There is nothing absolute. You know, the only thing that's absolute in this world is that you're going to die. You've started your death journey. Everything else is fluid, man. So, like, I, I try not to deal in absolutes, man. Right. So I want to come back to something you said, but also just checking in and making sure everyone's doing well. I know that, you know, the story you told about seeing footage of your son at a rally and how that, you know, was one of these turning points for you. And you really were like, "Mm, I need to kind of change a lot about this whole scene and the path for my family. And I'm just curious how your family is doing. Oh man. Let me tell you about my family. Um, So we'll start off with uh, the scene that's been changed. My son is my little baseball star. Breathe, eat, sleeps, everything baseball. We have him on a, a traveling select baseball team. So that's kind of like the elite little league. And he is like, he's just such a dominant player. And not just in his skill, but in his attitude. He's a natural leader. He just, he really brings the team together. And he loves this. He loves the game. My daughter, she's blossoming into her own little human being and it's really cool to watch so she went from like having really long hair like you have to like chopping it off she's like i I take her to the to the barber to the the salon for her 
And I'm like, you can get your hair cut however you want. You're you're seven. You're you're a grown woman now. And uh, she sits down and she's like, I want it cut like this. So she got it cut off, like down to the shoulders. And it was like higher in the back. She was like really nervous to show me. She was like, dad, uh, look. And I was like, oh, that looks really cool. So, oh, thank like, God. <laughs> yeah, she loves it. She She's just becoming her own little person wearing her own little outfits. And it's really cool to watch. Uh, Melissa is, uh, she's doing great. She's um, getting ready to go in to have surgery when we get back from Boulder. Uh, so I'll be on like mom and dad duty for a few weeks till she heals up. But uh, and we're doing great. We're, we're grinding. We're doing the things that, that we should be doing as a family and as just good human beings. And and that's that's what, what we're into now. It's just trying to be the best versions of ourselves. And I try to be the best role model for the two little mini-me's and just trying to heal, heal hearts one at a time, man.